Welcome to MHM Podcast Network on moviehousememories.com. Podcast for pod people. Our feature presentation begins now. You're listening to Lunchtime Movie Review from lunchtimemoviereview.com, and we are the children of the 80s. Welcome back to Lunchtime Movie Review. Uh, with us today is a panel to talk 80s movies. Uh, I'm Matt. I'm Jason. I'm Greg. And I'm Patrick. And Greg today has a movie for us to review from the 80s. Greg. First, a word from our sponsor. This podcast is brought to you by Piles Speech Therapy. Do you have a stutter? Do assholes treat you like you're retarded because of the way you talk? Do women only talk to you because they want something? Are you sick of singing your conversations? Are you afraid of owning a parrot? If you answered yes to any of these questions, it's time for Piles Speech Therapy. Order now and receive a free fish. Remember, Piles Speech Therapy. Available in English, Italian, French, and Russian. Pile speech therapy to st- 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 stop the stutter. Our advertisers are getting good. This is exciting stuff. Yeah, they're. I mean, this is a, a very important agency. Yeah. I, I think they're doing, no, they're God's doing good work. work. Absolutely. Should we talk about the movie? Yeah. This is a hugely successful comedy called A Fish Called Wanda. Okay, hugely? Now you're really overselling it. Hugely successful film? From the it was end? hugely successful. Ooh. I would beg to differ on that. Not every movie can be E.T. No, it cannot. I would call that hugely successful. This was a mildly successful comedy. What, what year did this come out? 1988. Uh, Rain Man, number one movie that year, right? Correct. How much did Rain Man make? About $190, $200 million. How much did Fish Called Wanda make? $62 million. What would that be in 2011 dollars? It still would be $62 million, but if you're talking about inflation, probably about 110 it, it was Yeah, made, that was a bomb. It was made, it, it, no, it wasn't it, a bomb. It's just saying it wasn't a hugely successful. It was made for $7.3 million. Yeah. It did pretty well. It did pretty well. It was a profitable film. The hugely successful comedy. It was nominated for three Academy Awards <laughs> and won one. It was pretty successful. It was it was hugely successful. It was a movie that had legs too, didn't it, Patrick? Did it open number one? No, it did not. Did it ever? Was it ever the number one grossing film of any week? Uh, yeah, eventually at week ten, it finally be- became the number one film. At week ten, and isn't that unusual? Doesn't that defy a Hollywood convention? I mean, typically movies do better in their opening weekends. True. Uh, typically back then, or back then, well, back then, yes, as well. Back then, it actually holds the record for the. No, it holds the record to this day. Still, the longest film to, it took to take to get number one. All right, all right, that was pretty successful. Patrick's been proven wrong. No, not hugely. So- I say it was successful. It's just not. <laughs> this it's will not, not be hugely successful. <laughs> 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 or an only. <laughs> the, the namesake of our sponsor, Ken Pyle, is played by Michael Palin, and and his uh, flatmate. George Thomason comes up with this plan to pull off a, a, a diamond heist. He enlists uh, co-conspirators. The first is Wanda Gershwitz, played by Jamie Lee Curtis, and she and George are lovers for approximately two years leading up to this. Wanda is American, uh, and she's a con artist. She enlists Otto West to join in the conspiracy. Otto West is played by Kevin Klein. The four pull off this armed robbery. They dress in ninja costumes, which is, I think, a, a theme of the prevailing theme of the eighties. Very eighties, yeah. But they Who didn't bl- want to be a ninja. They were in black, though. I always like the ninja movies where they'd be like orange, or pink. I think that's American Ninja Two. It is American Ninja Two. <laughs> Color coded ninjas. Those are not good ninjas. If you send a red ninja out in the world, bad things are going to happen. You're going to notice. There's here comes a ninja. Unless you're in snow and the white ninja, that makes sense. But other than that, it just doesn't make sense. Pastels were big in the 80s. That, that's, that's right, the neon. Storm Shadow had it right if he only stuck to the snow. That's true. They pull off this robbery. They get away with 13 million pounds worth of diamonds. Was it a perfect robbery? Not a perfect robbery because... The English screw up everything. As they're driving away in their getaway car, an elderly lady, Mrs. Cody, who is walking her three Yorkshire Terriers, witnesses. The getaway car. And she's able to later identify George Thomason as a passenger in that car. So future robbers take note. Kill the elderly during your robbery. Kill the elderly during your robbery. They have nothing to live for. And George definitely is going to take Jason's uh, advice because he does enlist later Ken to take care 
of that witness. But before, uh, the four get away, they, they drive to this old warehouse where they deposit, uh, the, deposit the diamonds into a safe and lock it. The four scatter. George goes back to his flat. Meanwhile, Wanda and Otto go back to theirs, and Otto calls the police and gives an anonymous tip that George was one of the people that pulled off the robbery. Typical American. The problem is that Wanda and Otto are unable to succeed because George has already moved the loot. It's no longer in the safe in the warehouse. Uh, He's moved it to a, a safety deposit box at a hotel near Heathrow Airport. Typical red coat. And the only other person who, who knows, uh, uh, at least who will know uh, eventually of, of George's actions, is Ken Pyle, again, his loyal confidant, the only person that George can really trust. And who can't pronounce the name of the hotel. So this is a very good person to tell your secrets to. That's true. George is arrested at his flat. His barrister is Archie Leach, played by John Cleese. What the hell's a barrister? A barrister is a lawyer who litigates cases in court. They don't call them lawyers? Barristers cannot act as attorneys. They, they don't have the same powers, but they do appear in court and litigate on behalf of people who are charged with crimes or who are being sued. Hmm. Typical King George bullshit. Yeah, they really don't, re- they don't explain that at all in the film. Now that Otto and Wanda realize that they don't know where the loot is, uh, they figure out that the best way to find out is through Archie's, uh, through Archie Leach. Thinking Wait a minute. That, How's Otto feel about it when he finds out? What's, what does he feel when he finds out there's no money in the, in the safe? Disappointed! <laughs> Probably the best line in the movie, I would say. Yeah, it's a pretty good line. So the idea is... It's actually Wanda, funny. It's almost a comedy. Man. Almost, that almost makes it a comedy. <laughs> so the idea is Wanda is going to entreat Archie. She's going to basically try to seduce Archie. So Archie will tell her where the diamonds are located. But Typical you, woman. Yeah, you, but you said this was their plan. It's actually her plan. Otto's not on board with this. He doesn't think of this. Because they also show right at the time when they... This is five minutes into the movie. They show... That uh, Wanda was not only going, has, not only had she burned George by turning him into police with Otto, but she was getting ready to bash Otto in the head and take the loot all for herself. Absolutely. So it's a triple cross. Triple Wanda. cross. Yes. Typical woman. <laughs> and what she finds out uh, from Archie is uh, that Archie is in a, a very unhappy marriage uh, with a, a woman named Wendy. And Wendy is very wealthy, uh, but is uh, a, a total bitch. Typical Wendy. Meanwhile, George gives Ken the assignment to assassinate the eyewitness. So sending the stammering... Idiot. Ken's going to kill the woman. Yeah, Sending the stammering idiot to do a very important job. What is, what's even the relationship between Ken and George? Do we know that at all? Ken is his flatmate. He has a room in George's uh, very nice flat, very nice apartment. Are you insinuating that English men that live together are gay? And they're more gay if one has a stutter? Is that what you're saying, Matt? <laughs> I think it's a... It, one could infer that, yeah. No, no well, it was, kind of, it was a, kind of weird because it did appear to be a one-bedroom apartment. It did. To me, it looked like a Burton Ernie situation. I think everything's on the up and up on this one. Unfortunately, Ken's attempts at killing Mrs. Cody result in him inadvertently killing her three Yorkshire Terriers one by one. This is such a powerful moment in the movie, three powerful moments, that John Cleese would later say he still gets mail about people angry and upset with him that he wrote into the movie these three innocent dogs dying, but... No one ever wrote him a letter about Ken actually killing the old woman. Yeah, and and along those same lines is Ken has no problem killing the old woman. They also reshot the the dog deaths. Is I guess they they the the original sh- scenes were more bloody and more realistic, and they ended up turning them cartoonish and, and like puppets. 
to to try to soften the blow of the the animals being being killed. In Ken's defense, they were not nice dogs. No, the Yorkshire Terriers are very nice dogs. And, not in the film. And also in the deleted scenes, what there's a sequence that they took out entirely a running joke through the film where Kevin Klein is such a crack shot that whenever he sees a cat throughout the film, you know, with their waving tail, that he drops to the ground, pulls out his gun, and shoots the cat's tail off. And later in the film, you see a vase full of cat's tails, like a bouquet. And it was actually a several deleted scenes that they said ultimately they took out of the film because after killing the dogs and killing all the fish that they were afraid that they would look a little... Oh, so they they took out some. They took out the funny scenes that made it a comedy. Yes, I actually thought those were funnier than most of the dog scenes. I'm sure you guys would have liked them clubbing seals and whale hunting as well. That was shooting off cats. That's no. pretty funny. If it served the purpose of the story, Jason, yes, I would. Cat people are crazy though, and that's I, I think that's why they cut them. Right, they, they would have fucked them up. Yeah, they would have. <laughs> Ken's final failed assassination attempt, which results in the death of the third Yorkshire Terrier, actually causes Mrs. Cody to have a fatal heart attack. Wanda is uh, listed as a defense witness. She's the alibi witness for George. So Wanda actually testifies at George's trial, and and, uh, she incriminates George, surprises Archie, and some things about Archie and Wanda's relationship are revealed. Archie's wife grows suspicious. And, and she actually sits in the gallery, takes time off from gardening to watch her husband in action in the courtroom. And when Archie refers to Wanda as darling, uh, her suspicions have been affirmed, and she decides to divorce Archie right on the spot. While this is going on, Archie decides that his career is in ruins, uh, his marriage is, is shot, he has fallen in love with Wanda, and he decides to just chuck it all in. He's going to appeal to George and say, look, you're going to be convicted now. How about you cut a last-minute plea if you reveal the location of where the jewels are are hidden? So all four show up at the airport at virtually the same time with Otto and Wanda uh, in possession of the jewels. Wanda finds an opportunity to hit Otto over the head with a baton, Otto's knocked unconscious. She locks him in a storage closet. She has the jewels. She goes boards the plane alone. Otto wakes up, shoots his way out, and runs to catch a Wanda. However, Archie's able to run into him. But Otto doesn't want to kill Archie right away. Otto wants to humiliate him, humiliate Archie before he smug kills him. English. So he takes him out onto the tarmac. Makes him bathe in some used oil, but lo and behold, Ken comes with a steamroller from behind and steamrolls Otto uh, to get revenge on Wanda. And Ken is so excited that Wanda he the fish. that he avenged his beloved fish that he loses his stutter and now can speak eloquently and actually do tongue twisters. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, makes sense that's how you you kill people and you that cures you of stammering meanwhile archie gets on the british airways flight with wanda and they head off to south america thus ending the film now that didn't sound funny to you matt uh no i was reliving it as he was telling it and I, i it wasn't funny i had never seen a fish called wanda before two weeks ago. I never saw it. So you're the one who's never seen it. I had never time. seen it. And I was looking forward to it because of the recommendation of, of you all. And I started, I did a little research on it. And they have, he, it's on li- almost every top 25, top 10 best comedy ever. It's It makes these lists. I thought, this is going to be a pretty f-ing funny movie. It's not funny. I was waiting for the jokes to start. I was waiting for the I was waiting for the story to start many times, and have I just felt ever, like it never came. Have it, it ever crossed your mind that because this, this is on so many lists for top comedies, that the problem is not with the movie but with you? Sure, I accept that. Or except that I tend to agree with them. That well, I, I group you guys together. All right, okay, but 
It's an overrated comedy film. I mean, how it, is it, was, it overrated? It was. I saw it in the theaters in 1988, and I walked out and went, "Wow, everything that was funny about it is in the preview." It was one of those films. Yeah. There were there were a handful of funny lines, and I could see that. If you would have seen the previews, you would have seen. Um, you saw the uh, "I apologize" scene. You saw "I'm disappointed." You know, you saw part of the end se- sequence uh, where he's got Archie in the oil barrel. I mean, you th- that was all in the trailer. You take out some, those three scenes, and you've taken out almost the funny scenes, all the funny scenes in the film. Oh, I entirely disagree. The jokes are fairly obvious. I, I don't know how you can say the jokes were fairly obvious The jo- in well, this. They don't really you, telegraph you introduce- that much in oh, the film. Oh. They, they telegraph that dog thing. It's a running line. We saw it once. The, thir- the second time, I could have predicted something was going to happen with the dog, and Ken was going to get injured. Once again, something in was the trailer going to happen for, with the dog, right. but not exactly the way it was going. In to the trailer for the, the film, the dog gets smashed. In the trailer for the film, it's one of the. I mean, it's they put well, all the. I parts understand on. what you're saying. That you thought that the three parts that you saw in the trailer were the only three three jokes, and I just entirely disagree with. One of the beautiful things about Otto, at least in my opinion, and this is the only one that counts at this table, is Otto, who believes he's really intelligent and is kind of one of these guys who reads philosophy, but he really doesn't Doesn't understand understand it. it. He misunderstands a lot of things. And he is so easily insulted when people think that they're better at him at anything. Right. Don't call him stupid. Especially calling him stupid. And Kevin Klein's reaction to people calling him stupid or his reaction to people that he perceives as being superior to him is, is spot on. And him being just this rude, bombastic American stuck in prim proper England is, is funny. And, he, I mean, he, he runs away with this movie, and he's entirely uh, – I mean, every time he's on screen, I'm laughing at something, whether he's pretending – that he's interested in Ken becoming his lover to prevent everyone figuring out that him and Wanda are really lovers, him trying to tell Wanda he's not jealous but always showing up at places where where Wanda's trying to seduce Archie, his interactions with Archie. Uh, the guy is, he just nails this part. And he wins the Oscar this year. He does win the Oscar actor. for Best Supporting Actor. Yeah, I mean, and, I, and I would absolutely agree that of the cast, he is by far the best. He does the best performance. He's by far the most comedic performance of them all. Um, I'm just saying, as a whole, he doesn't save it. It's not about Otto. It's about the the, right. the film is mainly about Archie and Wanda. That's and they're both. Oh, I terrible. disagree. No, oh, it's no. It, absolutely not. It's not. It's not about Archie. And but they are the two ultimate protect protect. Pro, 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 well, who is our protagonist? Who is our uh, <laughs> sponsor? <laughs> I'm going to need that number. Ken Pyle. Protagonists of, of the film. They're the ones who get away. They're the ones who presumably you're rooting for because they're the ones who end up getting getting the money. But that's not what the film's about, not their love story. I mean, if, if you think that the film's about no, their really? love story. Because it's called a romantic it's a, comedy. It's a romantic. It is about their love story. But the thing is that there's no reason in this world why Jamie Lee Curtis would fall for this guy. There's no rational reason in this world. Well, and she has a fetish. What's she has to finish for languages. Come on. Right, because he speaks to. Russian, she wants to bang him. And then he somehow, and they don't really well, develop this at all, he falls in love with her. He says, I, I love you so much that I'm going to abandon my job. I'm going to now be an accomplice and now be a part of a $13 million robbery. I think they do develop it. I think they show John Cleese's interaction with yeah, his yeah. wife, Wendy, and what a frigid right. English bitch she right. is. So the reaction is, his my wife daughter. is so, so sucks so bad, or so so such a bitch and so boring, that anyone will do, and this one who happens to be throwing herself at me because she's trying to, be, for, for underhanded purposes, that'll do. I don't I, don't I think it. you got it. Yeah. I well, think no, you do no, no. I mean, it makes... His life is completely demolished the minute... Everyone discovers he had a relationship with Wanda during the trial. Right, and he does fall in love with, with Wanda, and he has, I think, a wonderful so- monologue where he explains to her what it's like being English, how wonderful it is, how uplifting it is to be with someone who's a free spirit, who's an, you know, a typical American, warm-blooded, everything the English or not, and then he's ready to run away with her. 
They're all <laughs> unlikable people, but particularly Archie and Wanda. They're the most unlikable people. If I could have voted as to who should get this money, it would have been Otto and Ken. They would have gone off together. They would have ended up with a gay love affair, and they would have ended up with the money. That's who I was rooting for. Jamie Lee Curtis is an absolute stick. She had the the mandatory bikini scene or the mandatory underwear and panty scene, which she looks good. But other than that, she's a terrible actress. Her character was terrible, unlikable, and it wasn't even developed. I, I didn't buy it. I don't know. I bought her. I, I never really had a problem with her, and I usually have a problem with somebody in movies. I thought she played a kind of a grifter type style very well who uses sex as an absolute weapon she knows she can do it she has been using it with george she uses it with otto she uses it with archie and at a time she does use it with ken when she kisses him i haven't seen it probably since the early 90s and it's i I just i don't i agree with men i think it's an overrated comedy i don't get what the appeal about it there are some funny moments but they're very few and far between and the overwhelming story is that I think that the move the story along that they will sometimes just rewrite the character. I mean, Kevin Klein is supposed to be this bumbling idiot who does you know doesn't understand you know is you know very aggressive but not 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 intelligent, not smart. Yet he's quick enough when Ken is starting to get onto the scent that maybe something's going on between him and Wanda to start pr- playing homosexual. You know, with Ken. I mean, that that doesn't go in line with his character throughout the whole film. But it does because if he's such an imbu. Imbe- a bumbling idiot. They would never recruit him right. for this for this bank job. He does bring stuff to the table. He is very good with weapons. I just don't think a lot of of actors would have been been able to pull off this film as well as they did. When you think of a comedy, you don't think dogs dying, criminals getting away with loot, people double crossing each other. If you look at comedies, especially in the eighties, their their criminals and and still are criminals probably even today are very bumbling. If if you read it in a script about a stutterer who goes out who loves animals and goes out and and kills dogs, uh, albeit accidentally, you don't think it's funny. But the way they did it, it was obvious. It was obvious. They played the stutterer for comedy, and it was an obvious it way. It, was it might be obvious, done. but it it worked. Uh, what I'm saying is the Ken character, the stutterer. His stutter is played for a joke. It is there. It well, is sure. written there the entire time, so they can get to this that. The, the scene to, the two scenes towards the end one with Otto one with Archie so that they could both have t- troubles understanding what he was going to say and and it's just like oh my god this, it's the longest setup for a gag it was the longest setup for a gag <laughs> but it's hilarious I don't he, know about hilarious it was mildly it was mildly humorous all right. it, it was mild, this is mildly humorous this is a, a point where you tell someone and I'm sure our one listener has this friend where you tell this friend wow you really need to see this film because it's it's really good and you know that friend you know the minute that comes out of your mouth that friend is going to say no matter what i'm not going to like this film as much because i have to be the guy who doesn't like titanic that's, that's who doesn't true. go to see titanic i'm the guy who has to say dark side of the moon is the best pink floyd album despite owning the wall it's that guy and i'm sitting at the table with two of them I looked at it with fresh eyes. As I said, I hadn't seen it for probably 20 years. I saw it in the theater, and I was mildly amused by it. Didn't watch it for a couple of years, and someone had it and saw it. I mean, this is probably only the third. I actually watched it twice, too, so third and fourth time that I've seen it. Going back and looking at it, I was like, this is not, it's not that, it's not that good. It's not that entertaining. I'm not surprised Matt didn't like it, but I, I'm surprised you like it so passionately. Yeah. I'm fond of wit, not just, you know... That's the thing. I didn't find it that sharp. Witty. It was really low brow for Matt. Not no. low brow. I just say I just. It was so. No. If you, if you could witty. add more, I don't know. Right. Um, stutterers. Su- stutterers. Something really overt, like a stutterer that you're going to keep making fun of and have the same joke over and over again. Maybe you know, if you could have his so Otto's balls being peeled off Ken's face at one point. You know, something more like that. This wasn't even. I mean, it's not even the funniest Jamie Lee Curtis movie. And it's it, it is my complaint. I, Listen, look, it's I, I mildly like entertaining. A lot too. It's mildly entertaining. My complaint is that they call this one of the funniest ten movies of the fucking universe. It's not. It is no Elf. <laughs> elf is a funnier film than this. It's a fine little film. The story's not great. 
the humor is <laughs> there's actually a plot in this. <laughs> the, the humor now, you, may, you may find all of the people falling in no, love no, no, and falling no. out of love. No, in and Matt's all the defense, is no. not not Elf did realistic. have a plot. <laughs> like I, there, there is. <laughs> There is an amazing plot to this to this story. Amazing, amazing plot. No, there is. It's There's... a shitty caper. The 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 the, the planned the... out by bumbling right idiots. because capers All always are perfect. Like right. Ocean's Eleven, they're it's... always perfect. That was really cool. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean that was really cool. Yeah. It's a shitty caper. They don't explain the the, the they don't develop the love interest between. Jamie Lee Curtis and, and, and John Cleese at all. It just kind of well, I, happens. It really does feel like a, a bunch of, you have the same characters, and they wrote a couple different skits and then mashed it all together. Oh, I don't feel like that at all. I think you, you read that all wrong. I didn't read it. <laughs> well, you, you, maybe you should, because maybe you would understand it better. I understood it fine, and, and it was a fine... But saying that, it well, fine. it was just you know a couple scripts uh, put skits. together. Or skits. skits. Not a bunch of scripts. One script bunch of skits right. yeah i want to have i want to have these this bit about the dog and i want to have this bit uh a, a couple little bits where kevin klein does the same thing and interrupts them and and i mean it was it was a bunch of this the same bits thrown together and i, didn't I, I find disagree it as, I, I thought it overall it was advancing the story see that and that's exactly that's a, i'm glad you said that's that's not what it, it did not advance the story i was i felt like get on well your story it, was wanda and archie I think that was John. Cle- I think that was John Cleese's story, the the, the romantic so. comedy, the, the 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 love story. I mean, you you I read don't know things about people... this film, and that's what they say the about. I don't know MacGuffin in this film. I don't know if yes. on their own film. One of the funniest romantic comedies of the decade is that written by John Cleese. That's, that, that's in the, what... that's on the on the <clears throat> on the box, and I'm sure he was in charge of all of that. I'm probably the only one here that watched the commentary, and the commentary was all done by John Cleese, and he said, and that's what he talked about, is that everything was, they rewrote scenes to make this this romance more believable so that there was a happy, a happy ending. That was, you know, that they played out these scenes so that they, the, the romance, that, that they would push forward this romance. That's a consequence, and that might been, it might have been Hollywood studio saying, the audiences aren't going to like this unless Hollywood's- you have some... You know, have a love interest, have a love story what, going on. But the Hollywood studio didn't make the film. They didn't come back and say, oh, hey, we released it, now let's re-release it. It was a romantic. That was how it was released. That's how they made the film. They did test it with an, a, an ending where Jamie Lee Curtis is wearing, it's supposed to imply that she's going to screw Archie Leach over by because she's wearing shark shoes, and that it, the audience is left with the impression she's going to ditch him, which I find more believable and, and more funnier. true to the character, and actually probably even funnier as well. That would make it a comedy. <laughs> no, I, look, I get they were reaching for a comedy. I'm not saying it was a drama. I'm, I'm being hyperbolic about it, but it wasn't that f-ing funny. I mean, it wasn't. I smiled through it. I thought, okay, that's funny. Ha ha. Uh, you know, it's, it's like it's, it's kind of like texting or on on emails. It's like LOL. There was no LOLs. There was some chuckle. You as, had a smiley face. There were some salts. Uh, smiled at first, then stopped. <laughs> there were some LQTMs laughing quietly to myself. It's not the top, one of the top ten. And I, if, if pressed, you there are at least ten films funnier than A Fish Called Wanda. Right, Jason? Oh, yeah. Okay. So you do at least agree with me that it's not one of the top ten funniest movies of all time. It's not even one of the top ten funniest movies from the 80s. No, I, I think it would be one of the top ten funniest probably from the 80s. I'm just trying to understand Kevin Klein ripping the panties off of Jamie Lee Curtis, putting them over his face, and saying Benito Mussolini, and that's is that was that a laughing quietly to it, myself? I'm not moment? sure. Is that wit or was that lowbrow? So is it? <laughs> I guess that it's was all the, of the above. The that's what makes yeah. it funny. <laughs> yeah. No. Look, he he doesn't speak Italian really well, and she wants him to speak Italian, so he says a bunch of cheeses. It's yeah. No, it's it's mildly entertaining. It's 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 funny. It's okay. It's am I? I think it's overrated. I think that's what with what I'm what the point is is it's it's overrated as a film it's overrated as a comedy i did think kevin klein was good i thought when he was on it he absolutely stole every scene he was in some of the things i found interesting about the film though were um just facts about uh, michael palin and because there was a backlash about the stuttering and and people were pretty pissed off uh, about him him the stuttering character as well as the way that kevin klein uh, treated him 
uh, throughout the film, as, as Greg mentioned earlier. And I, some things we learned about uh, Michael Palin is that he, he was somewhat vested in this character for some very specific reasons. His father had a stutter. And I think, I think Michael, and, and Michael Palin's character is true to, to most people who have a stutter when he's comfortable. He loses the stutter when he's tense, when he's nervous, when he's not comfortable around. So he stutters more around Otto, and he stutters more when he's in a stressful situation. And well, and they also took out at the end. They, we talked about the dog scenes. They took out. They also took out. Um, there's a steamroller scene where where Ken steamrolls Ken. I'm sorry, Ken steamrolls Otto, right? And um, he's intending to. Uh, Ken is coming to kill me, which again that was very. It was very understated, very very witty, rather than lowbrow. I guess that that move there, but he someone feels jaded. <laughs> he, um, what I thought was interesting is one of the things they took out is a bloody, dead Kevin Klein shot, and they they took that out completely and and show Kevin Klein covered in mud at the right. at the window, kind of seeing them take he's, off. He's Wiley e. Coyote. He, he, he is his back. It, it is very Wiley e. Coyote. And I thought it, I thought the other one would have been better. Some of the some of the um, to make it more of a dark comedy. I think if he would have just ran with dark comedy, uh, then that would have been a lot better. And, and and I think that's what speaks to the the age of it, the time of it. I mean, this is this is kind of before things like Fargo and some of these other things that that come later. And I don't think they went that far. So so maybe part of the thing for me, part of my complaint, or maybe why I don't like it so well, is that I've already seen. Some of these other things that have taken it to the next level and have really done a dark comedy, and maybe for the time it was really cutting edge and doing all these things that you talked about, Jason, of using crooks as the as the good guys and killing animals as kind of being the the punchline. And, and it might have been taken by other things that I've saw, that I've seen do better, in my opinion, and go all the way with it. And so this seems like a cute little quaint movie that never really reached what it was trying to do. So. So I think they almost got there. I think they really. They I guess the other thing is they went back. Thank you for some credit. They almost got there. <laughs> they would. They they've. This is a good three line. quarters of yeah. a film. <laughs> they kind of towed the line. It's a backhanded compliment. It is. I, I love that. They tried to. You tow did better the line. than I thought you would do. <laughs> you don't sweat so much for a fat girl. They kind of tried to uh, straddle the line of being lighthearted and fun and and cute and dark and and I don't think it it worked that way. But oh, sorry. Oh. One other thing that it, that didn't come out and it, back when they were talking about. Michael Palin's uh, father, uh, the, the, something that he did do is actually found the Michael Palin's, uh, what the London's, Michael Palin's School for Stammering Children or something like that. And it's a real uh, institution. It's a real thing that he raises money and does help uh, kids with, with stutter. So I think that was an interesting fact that that was a uh, personal through line for Michael Palin. And little known fact, at that school they give the kids mesh face masks so other kids can't run up and stick chips up their nose. Um, uh, another and we've thing, just taken a major step backwards. <laughs> another thing, the... Uh, That's real highbrow. The, uh, I, I, look how slighted you are. You are like Otto. <laughs> Don't um, call me stupid. Right. Don't call me stupid. <laughs> so we end all podcasts uh, with going around the table and saying whether you liked the film when you first saw it and whether you think it stands the test of time. Obviously, one of us at this table is at a very disadvantage, so we can just skip him entirely. <laughs> I liked it when I first saw it. Um, I still really like it now. Yeah, I agree. I, I saw it probably on VHS, probably the same time, around 1990 or so. I really enjoyed it then. I, I laughed really hard again watching it. It definitely still stands the test of time. I saw it in 1988. Uh, in opening weekend, I remember going to see it, and uh, I didn't. I thought it was an okay film then. I still think it's an okay, okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, we'll okay. see you at uh, lunchtimemovereview.com. dot com. Matt, did you have anything? There? I got nothing. I I never saw it in the eighties. Is the first time I saw it. I mentioned that two weeks ago. I, I thought it was fine. I thought it was long, a little bo- a little boring. Um, Way to go, uh, Leonard Martin on all this. It's a little <laughs> it was, long. It was a little long. long. Right. Yeah, one hundred eight minutes. It's a little long. Um, <laughs> No, I, it was it was okay. I was underwhelmed, uh, and I wouldn't watch it again. Sorry, guys. I wanted to like it. Next time we're watching, I just like Dark Side of the Moon better. <laughs> <laughs> I am. A, I like the wall. Let's be clear. The wall. The wall. I mean, th- this was no Midnight Madness, Jason. Let's uh, without doubt. That's a great film. Man. I, I don't, know you. Don't you even, you don't can even keep defending this. that one. So. Oh my god, Midnight Madness is a great yeah. film. 
I'm about to go. Oh, don't talk to me, Mr. Ass. Rad. <laughs> Rad is also a great film. Rad. The hell? Yeah, whatever, Mr. Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> yeah, that's that's his. And he picks all the really popular. My favorite movies are Raiders of the Lost Ark. Star Empire Wars. Strikes Back. <laughs> I didn't pick Star Wars. What else Way to reach out one? there. Right, that's a real. Uh, <laughs> uh, we call that a front runner. <laughs> Check out the webpage at lunchtimemoviereview.com and the, the Facebook page. Uh, lunchtime movie review we got to get out of here right now and you guys are invited this podcast is not endorsed by 20th century fox home entertainment and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only a fish called wanda all names and sounds of a fish called wanda characters and any other a fish called wanda related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of 20th Century Fox Home Entertainment or their respective trademark or copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Lunchtime Movie Review, Movie House Memories, and Fuzzy Bunny Slippers Entertainment, LLC, unless otherwise noted.